Hello there. Today, we're going to be talking about how we actually use algebra to solve equations. That is, how we actually use the solving of equations with algebra. What are they used for? That's what I'm trying to say. Well, they're used for problems like this. The perimeter of a playing field for a certain sport is 210 feet. The field is a rectangle, and the length is 47 feet longer than the width. Find the dimensions. All right, let's translate this. You've got a rectangular field right there. A rectangular field. Well, let's draw a rectangle. You don't, you, you could be an artist like I am. That is, under no circumstances could you draw a straight line. Or you could be an excellent artist. Either way, no one needs to know. You don't have to make a YouTube video. This is the length, and this is the width, and this is the length, and this is the width. Nothing fancy. Now, it says here that the length, this side, these sides, the length is 47 feet longer than the width. So here's the width. The length is going to be 47 feet longer. Okay, so W plus 47. Now we're told the perimeter. The perimeter is like a fence around the outside. How long is that fence? It's the perimeter. The perimeter is 210 feet. That means that if you add up these four sides, they'll equal 210. We do have a formula, perimeter equals 2L, 2 times the length, plus 2 times the width. Because there are two lengths and there are two widths in a rectangle. All right, so 210 equals 2 times, the length is W plus 47, plus 2 times the width. This is called the setup. Setting up a word problem is essential to getting it right. All right, so 210 equals, I'm going to scroll up, it makes writing easier and it makes your watching easier as well. Two times W plus two times 47 plus two W. Let's find out what two times 47 is. 2 times 47 is 94. So this is going to be 94. If I have two W's and I add another two W's, I'll have four W's. So four W plus 94 equals 210. That's great. All right, this is a constant term, CT. This is a variable term because it has a variable in it. A variable is a letter. I mean, you can think of it that way. It does get a little more complicated. 
I need to get this constant term over there with that constant term. So what I'm going to do is make 94 equals 0. Oh, how can I do that? Since this is positive 94, I will subtract 94. 94 minus 94. Ninety four minus ninety four is zero. Bring down the four W. And two ten minus twenty nine. Twenty nine. Ninety four. Okay. 210 minus 94, enter, is 116, so 116. Now notice this, while we're here, the minus sign, the minus sign is different from the negative sign. When you have a negative number, this sign goes in front of it. When you're subtracting, you use this operation key. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are called operations. There are other operations, too, that you're going to get to know. Okay. So, 116 equals 4w, because 4w plus 0 is 4w. Now, I need w, I don't care what 4w equals. So, since this is 4 times w, I will divide by 4, the opposite of multiplication. 4 divided by 4 is 1. That gives me 1w, which is what I need. And 116. Oh, I didn't even have to do that. I could have said, I could have left 116 there and just said, divided by. Ah, but it's not going to work now. So, I messed up. That's okay. 116 divided by 4 is 29. So, W equals 29. That means that the width is 29, and the length is going to be 29 plus 47. Now, watch what happens. Plus. See, it says answer there. That's the answer that was last in memory. 29 plus 47, enter, 76. So the length is 76. The dimensions of this rectangle are the length and the width. How long is the length? How long is the width? Now we know. 29 feet and 76 feet. What you'll discover in my math lab is that there's an answer box, and you'll type, you know, for the width, width equals 29, and feet is already written here for you. All right, and length equals 76. Okay. Now, if we want to check, we need to make sure that 76 plus 29 plus 76 plus 29, are they really 210? Let's see. 210 equals 2L plus 2W. 210 equals 2 times 76 plus 2 times 
29. Watch what I can do in the calculator. I mean, if I can do it, you can do it. That's why I'm showing you this. Two parentheses, 76, close parentheses, plus two parentheses, 29 parentheses. This is just what I wrote over here. Enter. It's 210. So 210 equals 210. Is 210 the answer? No. 76 and 29 are the solutions to this problem. But it is true that 210 does equal 210. So if this is true, then these are true. I don't give you a time limit on a test. So you can take as long as you want. Probably not three hours, but well, I don't know. All right, now we're going to do this problem. At a certain real estate firm, realtors, people who sell houses, realtors selling homes receive a commission. They get money. 9% on the first $140,000 of the selling price and 8% of any amount exceeding $140,000. Exceeding means greater than. A realtor for the firm received $17,960 for selling a house. What was the selling price? I don't know offhand. Let's see. Here we've got a house. Little window there. Happy little house. Okay, this happy little house. There's an assumption here. Okay, the assumption is this. The base price is $140,000. Price equals $140,000 plus an extra amount. That's the selling price of the house. Now the realtor gets a commission. And what that consists of is 9%, which is 0 0.09, of $140,000 plus 8% of any amount exceeding $140,000. We have to use the decimal equivalent of 9% and 8%. So this is our commission, 0 0.09 times 140,000 plus 0 0.08x. And we're being told that that is going to add up to $17,960. Now, while you're actually calculating, I was taught That when you're actually doing the math, you never put any commas. So 17,960 equals 0 0.09 times $140,000 plus, whoops, plus 
plus 0 0.08x. All right, let's calculate this. Point zero nine times one four zero 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 one four zero 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 zero. Okay. Enter. That's twelve thousand six hundred dollars or one two six zero zero. plus 0 0.08x, and that equals 17960. All right, now, analyze. Always analyze your equations. Something is an equation if it has an equal sign with st stuff. Stuff on the left and stuff on the right, and an equal sign in the middle. That's a nice basic way to think of it. This is a constant term. This is a constant term. This is a variable term. Okay. I have to... I have to move, okay? I have to move 12600 over to the other side. I do that by making it equal zero on the side it's originally on. This is positive 12600. Zero, zero. I am going to subtract 12600, zero, zero, 12,600, from both sides of this equation, minus 12600. Zero, zero. Now, 12,600 minus 12,600 is zero. And usually I show that by marking through it. Bring down the plus 0 0.08x. Now come over here, 17960 minus, this is mildly irritating. All right, there we go. Okay. Minus 5,360 equals 0 plus 0 0.08x. 0 plus 0 0.08x is 0 0.08x. So we have 5,360 equals 0 0.08x. I want 1x. I don't care what 0.08x. 8x equals, so I divide by 0 0.08, 0 0.08. Boom, boom. 0 0.08 over 0 0.08 is 1. And I have no idea what that is, but this was my last answer in the calculator. So all I have to do is hit divide 0 0.08, enter. And I have 67,000. So X, the amount exceeding 140,000, is $67,000. Okay, so what is the selling price? The price of the house is 140,000 plus 
the amount exceeding one hundred forty thousand. which is 67,000. Well, let's add those together. 67,000 plus, plus, there's plus, 140, 140, zero, 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 enter, $207,000. That's a lot of money. Okay, so how do we know that's true? Well, we're told that $17,960 equals 0 0.09 times 140,000 plus 0 0.08 times 67,000. Now, if that equals that, we're right. Let's see. I'm going to start over 0 0.09 times one four zero 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 plus point zero eight times oops times sixty seven thousand enter one seven nine six zero yes we're right. So this is our check, actually, check. All right, one more problem, I think. Yeah, one more. The number of internet paid search ads is increasing as advertisers move away from traditional marketing methods. The equation, this, would have been better to make it yellow, but oh dear, we'll just do this. We'll stay with this. This equation right here can be used to project, that is to look into the future, to project spending on internet search ads in billions of dollars X years after the year 2000. So it says estimate spending on internet ads in 2005. And then it says, in what year will spending on internet search ads be 101 billion? You have to stop and think and do some analysis before you jump into this. Make sure you understand everything you're being told. Let's go over it again. The number of internet paid search ads is increasing as advertisers move away from traditional marketing methods. There's your story that gives you the context. Okay, now you've got an equation. All right. Y equals 4.7x plus 49,000. Oh, <laughs> 49.7.
and that equation can be used to project spending on internet search ads in billions of dollars. So this, why is spending? in billions of dollars. So the billions are already understood. All right. Now that means when we get ready to do part B with 101 billion, we're only going to write 101, 101, because the billion is already taken into account. Now we have to decide how we're going to do these years. X, X is the number of years after 2000. X equals the number of years after the year 2000. Okay. What does that mean? Well, if you have X, numbers you can use for X, and you have years, well, let me write years, that would be better. Where's my eraser? There it is. I'm going to make a little table. If X is zero, that doesn't mean it's the year zero. It means it's the year 2000. Because X is years after the year 2000. This is a very common tool in economics and in, in the sciences. So you need to become familiar with it. You'll be using it a lot in college algebra. Year zero is the year 2000. Year one is the year 2001. Year two is the year 2002. And so on. Now, we're being asked about 2005, so we might as well just go ahead and count. 2003 is three years after the year 2000. 2004 is four years after the year 2000. And 2005 is five years after the year 2000. So what does it mean by estimate spending on internet search ads in the year 2005? See these decimals? They were rounded. Whenever you round a decimal, you're approximating. You're not getting an exact answer. You're getting an approximate answer. In real life, we deal with approximations almost all the time. There's almost never any such thing as an exact answer except for simple little algebra problems. Okay, now, since X is 5, when it's the year 2005, what I'm going to do is write this, 4.7 times 5 plus 49.7. Okay, 4.7 
times five. <laughs> well, I have to turn it on, don't I? Hmm, imagine that. 4.7 times five plus 49.7. Seventy three point two. So the spending is seventy three point two dollars, right? No, of course not. Seventy three point two billion dollars. Okay, about. That's the approximation. Now, we're being asked, in what year? 2006, 2007, 2008. In what year will Y equal 101, which means 101 billion? I don't know. Let's see. One. O one one zero one equals four point seven X plus forty nine point seven. We're going to solve that. The first thing I'm going to do is subtract forty nine point seven from both sides of the equation. Forty nine point seven plus forty nine point seven boom is zero. Bye bye. Four point seven X, that's four point seven times X, equals one zero one minus forty nine point seven. which is 51.3. That's interesting. All right. So to find out what x is, I divide both sides of the equation by 4.7. 4.7. Boom, boom. So x, which is 1x, equals 51.3 divided by 4.7. Let's find out what that is. 51. <clears throat> 51.3. divided by 4.7. Is that ugly beastie right there? 10.9. Well, we're supposed to round to um, uh, the nearest whole number. Please remember that all the numbers to the left of the decimal sign are whole numbers. All the numbers to the right are, are fractions. They're decimals. They're not whole numbers. This nine is going to cause that zero to round up to a one. So we're going to round this to 11. Well, that means x equals 11. What is 11 years after the year 2000? Well, I would guess 2000 plus 11 is 2011. So if you were stuck back there in the year 2000 and you were asking yourself, self, when is Internet's... What if you worked for Google in the year 2000? 
and you're asked, uh, uh, when, when will we get $101 billion from companies buying search ads? And your accountant goes in and uses that, uh, that equation right here. And comes back to you in three minutes and says, in 2011, we're going to be making $101 billion. Well, how much do you want to bet they make a whole lot more than that now? I would bet that even in 2011, they made more than that. But maybe not. Okay, here are your estimates. Now, this is a video. Okay, so you can go back and rewatch all of this as many times as you want. It's, it's on YouTube. The link is going to be under here, just the way the link to the first few problems is here. Okay. I have to save it before it'll turn into a little hand and become a, you know, take us to the link. But you'll have a link there so that when you find these notes in the week one module in Canvas, you'll be able to go right to the video. And I think it'll help you. Most people find it helpful. The modules will have one for every week. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.